and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Confederation of Indian Industry for inviting me and thank them as well as the Andhra government for their lavish hospitality. It is a privilege to share a forum with Ms. Lata Reddy, an erstwhile colleague of mine, and I can say that I am terribly proud that she continues to occupy a high position even after government. My starting point today on this subject, one could speak a lot about it, is really from the inaugural session where we heard a very comprehensive address by His Excellency Mr. Go Chok Thong. He made a survey of the international economic situation, talked about the role of India, the role of uh, ASEAN, how India should be more active, and so on, and uh, also underlined the opportunities and challenges. <clears throat> now, he represents a certain hyphenation of international expectations that with their continuing growth, India and China would somehow contribute to a revival of the global economy. This is, of course, one dynamic of the subject we are discussing. But the other dynamic is a remarkable feature, <clears throat> and as we can see from the statement just made by my predecessor, the government of India's views are extremely positive about this relationship, about its future, and about its unrealized potential. It would seem that the leaders of both our countries are not quite deterred or, or discouraged by a legacy of historical problems and they emphasize the positive aspects and that known differences should not come in the way of improvements wherever they are possible. My own view, which is quite distinct from the views of some analysts and strategists in India, is that whatever problems we have emanate from the geographical closeness of India and China. If you only looked at a world map, you will see that from Central Asia to South, extending to South Asia, to Southeast Asia and East Asia, our interests intersect. And in a time of growing economic growth and achievements, the question of rising ambitions of each and a sense of entitlement can sometimes bring one into misunderstandings. But I can assure you that any sober view of China in India would not view China as a challenge in a strategic sense, since both are determined to solve their problems peacefully and have so many interactions. So there is a gap to be fulfilled, to be filled between what the governments are trying to do and what a certain popular perception fed, I must say, sadly, by the media. I say this because this audience is so full of my countrymen who are exposed to the media and I hope they listen carefully to what the Deputy National Security Advisor said and to what I am trying to say, to see that the governments are mature enough to manage the relationship and to push it forward. Now, Coming to the subject at hand <clears throat> on innovations, uh, I think uh, one point for consideration uh, by the business community, by in fact all sections who are even engaged in other fields, would be to try and see if there's a prospect of joint China-India projects to, be, to begin with in South Asia, but also in other places in our extended neighborhood. Now, why do I mention this point to which I attach some political significance? Because the popular impression in India, of course, Pakistan will be an exception, is that India and China are inevitably in conflict in India's immediate neighborhood, a neighborhood also shared by China, namely Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, etc., etc. But if in this, these areas we can somehow build up a situation where a tripartite negotiation will have to be carried on with the host uh, parties involved, obviously. But if we can try and conceive of joint projects, it will remove a great political misunderstanding that somehow our interests are inevitably conflicting 
in a shared neighborhood. Secondly, in India there is great pessimism about the sort of infrastructure that China builds in our adjoining uh, area, Tibet. Now, when you build railways and, road, uh, and railroads, it's not just one-way traffic. I think India should look more constructively on this as to how to utilize the infrastructure that China is building there.